All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Ravi Rajani, who is in London, just outside London in the UK. How are you doing, Ravi? Yes, my friend, I'm good. I'm not in sunny San Diego, but I'm yeah. good. I'm uh, I'm weathering the storm, my friend, with a with a newborn, uh, nearly twelve weeks old. These bags under the eyes are real. There's no filter that could cover it. There's no filter that could cover it, man. Yeah, no, I love it, love it. And Ravi helps uh, B2B SaaS sales teams ditch feature selling and start storytelling so they can stand out, build trust, and improve win rates. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today is uh, storytelling, uh, storytelling in sales. And um, let's face it, Ravi, I mean, most most of us are kind of natural storytellers. We just don't know that we are, right? I mean, if you think of people will will tell stories, you know, when they're with their friends or family and stuff. But then when we get into a work environment and sometimes in sales, it all starts to get a little rote and, and kind of, you know, we feel like we should do it in a particular way. Mm, definitely. And you know, it's funny. I think if you asked, this is my perspective anyway, if we asked yeah. a lot of, if we took 10 salespeople and said, would you consider yourself a natural storyteller? I'd be very curious to see how many would say yes. Because I think a lot of them actually struggle with storytelling because of the belief system that maybe mm -hmm. I'm not engaging. I'm not a storyteller. The classic is I'm just an SDR. I don't have any stories to tell, which I don't believe. But right. the truth is we do, like you said, have a lot of stories to tell. But when you say to somebody, hey, tell me a story about what happened last week on your <laughs> on Friday in that meeting, you're like, oh, I, I, I don't have any, any stories to share but if you ask hey what happened and what was the yeah. challenge at that moment and what was the turning point when that call changed and then what was the outcome unknowingly you've just shared a story so i think we have stories around us in our everyday lives the the point is to extract them and figure out which ones add business value and ultimately embed them into our well into your sales process if you're listening to it yeah, no, no, 100%. And and let's face it, I mean, most of us, uh, I mean, we come from storytelling traditions. I mean, certainly, you know, my, my background is Irish. It's long history of, of oral storytelling. And, uh, yeah. you know, throughout history, a lot of cultures obviously do. So it is something that's kind of innate in us. But like you said, hmm. is if you say that to a lot of salesperson, salespeople, like, okay, you got to start telling stories, you got to start telling stories on, on calls. And when you're interacting with prospects and customers, they'd be like, well, okay, well, what kind of stories should I be telling? Exactly. And I think salespeople often wonder, well, do we mean a case study? Because I've got tons of yeah. case studies. And yeah, the yeah. way I like to see it is, I don't know if you've ever experienced this yourself, but if you go to a, a shopping mall and somebody has come, has somebody's ever come up to you and said, hey, sir, would you like a bite of this cookie? And you're thinking, oh, you know, I've got to go to this shop. I've got to go to that shop. I don't really have time, but all right. And you take a little bite and you're like, where's the rest of the cookies at? What flavors do you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. What's in this? Is this gluten-free? Yeah. Because yeah. the way I like to see it is the bite of the cookie is a customer success story. And mm -hmm. then the case study is you walking into the store, asking for the ingredients, asking for the flavors, figuring out the price list. And that's where the depth is. So for me, a customer success story is just one of various different stories that mm -hmm. sellers can craft. You know, there's the elevator story, a personal story, a customer success story, a story which handles objections, the cost of inaction story. There's so many that we can share from a company's perspective. The powerful ones are around the founder's story or the company creation story or even a product story, the why we're different story. So there's stories all around us, but even that can sound overwhelming. So what I really get people to focus on is to begin with understanding what storytelling is in a sales context and mm. maneuver them and I suppose usher them to learning how to craft an elevator story because now more than ever, being able to describe what you do, who you serve in a compelling and who you serve in a compelling way is hugely important because attention is the currency. Yeah, no, no, hundred percent. And I th and I think that's uh, that's part of it too, as you said, is when you're uh, teaching people how to use storytelling, you're not 
saying to them, okay, you're going to go off on some meandering, like lovely no. story that goes off in a no, load of different directions. It's got a purpose to it. Exactly. And for me, you know, it boils down to the concept of thinking like an acorn. And every time I say this, John, people are like, what do you mean? This dude's gone crazy. He's got a new board. He's gone crazy. But <laughs> let, let, stay with me. All right, let me take you back for a second to this dude called Ralph Emerson. Mm -hmm. He's a very famous quote. And the quote is, the creation of a thousand forests is in one acorn. Right. Now, if I think about a seller, the creation of a thousand relationships is in one story, but you just mm -hmm. need to learn how to share a compelling one. So for me, ACORN, if you break it down as an acronym, is actually per letter an ingredient to what is required for a compelling sales story. So let's take A of my ACORN checklist. A is your story needs to be attention grabbing, okay? You can't come mm -hmm. out in a presentation and go, let's go around the room. Um, <laughs> let, let's meet Ravi and John who are part of the investor team. <sighs> Everyone does yeah. that. Is boring. People fall asleep. So you've got to be attention grabbing. So how can you share a hook which captures people's attention? And then ultimately, it's your job to keep it. So as a seller, you can earn the opportunity to solve somebody's problem. So you need a hook, right? A couple of seconds, mm -hmm. something short, sharp and punchy. Then C stands for contain a relatable main character meaning your story should contain a relatable main character. Now, John, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but if you ever had a cold email hit you, somebody says, we recently helped Cisco achieve 48% increase yeah. in their bottom line. Can we? And then you're like, well, I don't know anybody who's Great. helped Cisco achieve 48%. <laughs> you, you see what I mean? Is yeah, they yeah, yeah. lead with one, a customer success story, but two, more, more intricately, they've led with a company. Now, there's a difference between Cisco and Ravi Rajani, who's yeah. the SVP of sales at Cisco in San Francisco, who hangs out with his buddies on the weekend and lives with his wife, dog and daughter, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's a very different level of connection that we have with human beings, because I believe that people connect with people, not companies. So you need a relatable yeah. main character inside of your story, somebody who your prospect can connect with. And then we've got uh oh and i have oh. to spell out acorn oh now <laughs> oh is your story should organically unfold within a simple story arc and what i mean is is i've got a friend called rich every time i see rich and it's not been a it's not it's been a while since i've seen rich but every time i used to see rich he's like dude i've got this story to tell you and john i'm a sucker for a good story you know so yeah, I'll say, yeah. okay, hit me with it there'd be a beginning there'd be an end there'd be a middle then there'd be a beginning and then they, it would add no value to my life. And this whole time I'm thinking, ha, you just wasted 20 minutes of my life. Right? So, uh, you know, a story should really have a simple story arc. And for me, mm -hmm. it's context, conflict, turning point, transformation, transformation. right? Yeah. A really simple four-step story arc. And that is very, very handy when you're trying to share stories under pressure. Then we move to R, which is reveal the villain. Your story should reveal the villain because I believe the higher the tension, the higher mm -hmm. the attention your prospect will pay to the story. So I don't know if you uh, have ever had a back problem, John, but man, my yeah. back's been in pieces. So I ring up my physio Louise and I was like, listen, I need to see you tomorrow at nine o'clock. I'm in pieces. She's like, okay, come in. I'll see you at nine o'clock. So I'm in her, uh, in her surgery or home clinic a couple of months back and she's prodding around. I'm thinking, oh, it's a slip disc, it's a slip disc. I know it's a slip mm -hmm. disc. And she's prodding around. I'm going, oh, ah, oh, I'm doing that. And she's like, rav, 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 listen, chill. It's nothing to do with your lower back. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it is. Because Louise, I'm telling you, it's to do with my lower back. It's killing me. And she's like, no, 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 it's nothing to do with your lower back. The problem is your flat feet. Oh. Once we figure out how to give your feet more support, because you have no arch, it's going to cure the problem in your knees and then cure the issue with your back. So when wow. prospects are thinking about their problems, often they think about the symptoms. Mm -hmm. It's our job to reveal a villain that educates them on the underlying root cause of their pain, AKA the flat foot. So what right, is the right. flat foot in the eyes of your prospects? And how can you share stories which deeply connect with them around that? And then N is pretty simple. N stands for nurture trust in the ACORN checklist. Mm -hmm. Your story should nurture trust. Now, if I'd asked my wife to marry me on our first date, she would have definitely said no. 
So when right. we think about our stories, we can't meet somebody for the first time and say, hey, would you like to book a discovery call? It's like, whoa, <laughs> like chill, chill, right? So for example, inside of your story, an effective call to action is one which focuses on the buyer's journey and mm -hmm. really what it takes to provide them with a unique experience. And sometimes that is asking them a high impact question just to receive a response versus, mm -hmm. hey, would you like to buy my product? So it's all about context. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, and I think the other thing that you, you touched on there is that whole human element, because I do think that that is something I mean, it was happening pre COVID. I think COVID uh, <clears throat> accentuated it. But I think, mm. you know, people are looking for more, you know, human to human connection. So to your point, uh, uh, as you went through that process, at every stage, you're really trying to personalize, humanize, make it, as you said, um, relevant, resonate with the with the other person, but but really give it some kind of level of authenticity. Yeah, e exactly, John. And for me, it boils down to: Does somebody make me feel seen, heard, or understood? And understood, because we've all mm -hmm. been there where we've been treated like a number. And we know we just mean a dollar sign or a pound sign to the person yep. that we're speaking to. And it's just icky. It just sucks. And it doesn't feel good. Now, we've all made mistakes. And I think everybody's learning and everybody's in their own journey. But I think human to human selling is the key. And there's mm -hmm. a human being behind your prospect. And there's a human being behind the seller, aka you. And storytelling is not a new phenomenon. It's been used since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bible is a book. Right. So mm -hmm. if we really think about uh, a book of stories, really. So yeah. if we really think about what brings us together and connects us as human beings, it's storytelling. So for me, if we think about storytelling as a tool to evoke an emotion with somebody, create mm -hmm. an authentic connection. And if there's an opportunity for a conversion, that's great. But I don't know about you, but I've never converted somebody into a paying client if I haven't connected with them first. Mm -hmm. And I think too much of the time we're forgoing connection because we just care yeah. about the conversion. And I think it's obvious in today's world. Oh yeah, no, I think that's, I think it is. And I think we've gotten fallen into this trap. Um, I think the, you know, the whole inbound thing certainly contributed to it. This whole trap of thinking that people can all be pre-qualified before you ever interact with them which um you know is a mistake I, I certainly believe but just going back to the 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 connecting piece because again um when you're when you're telling us when you're telling a story and you're keeping yeah. it nice and focused or whatever is you're starting you're you you're bringing that other person into a very comfortable environment because listening uh, hearing stories interacting with somebody's telling you a story that's something that you know, is very comfortable and natural to us, but it has to sound natural on the other side because that's the other trap, isn't it? Then people say, okay, I need to tell stories. Okay, I'm going to pick these three stories and I'm going to learn them off by heart so I can rattle them off. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't be in a conversation and somebody says, yeah, I'm really struggling with, um, yeah, just our team's outreach. And you say, well, that reminds me of Jim. And when we work <laughs> with Jim, right, we, we yeah. can't have that. So I think, you know, when it comes to, let's talk about a customer success story, because I think that's what a mm. lot of leaders really yep. resonate with. I talk about a four-step process of the first thing is really doing effective discovery and extracting the pain and really figuring out the flat foot issue, if we go back to the original conversation mm. of the client, because there's no point in sharing a story if you don't really know it's going to impact and resonate with somebody, yep. because the right story with the wrong client is still the wrong story, mm -hmm. right? The right story with the wrong client is still the wrong story. So the way I like to think about it is f the first step is really doing effective discovery and extracting the pain and thinking about the flat foot. The second step is once you have that and there's an admitted, hey, hey, I'm struggling with this, then it leaves you open to ultimately take the conversation that step further. And for me, the next step, step two, is asking an open-ended question. So somebody could say, how long have you struggled with that problem? Now, somebody could say one year, two year, three mm -hmm. years, it's close ended. Or they could say, can you tell me about a time when you realize that this was a massive problem for you, John? Yeah. All of a sudden, you're thinking about a story to share with me. I don't need to say, can you tell me a story? Because that's going to result in analysis paralysis. You're not going to think of yeah. one. So I should hopefully extract a story through that open-ended question. And then 
Step three is ask a follow-up question. Tell me more about that. When you specifically mention that, I saw you nodding your head. It sounds as though that's something right. that's really important to you right now. So figure out through effective listening what's important to them and ask an impactful follow-up question, something they're not used to be uh, used to having being asked, right? Yeah. And then, and then step number four is inserting a story. So mm -hmm. for me, that really allows somebody to um, feel seen, heard, and understood. And the worst thing is, is, you know, if you're ringing up, you're ringing up a friend, John, you know, you say, you say, Jamie, man, I've really been struggling with this. And this is really just, I can't sleep at night, man. It's, it's killing me. And mm -hmm. your friend just goes, yeah, well, you know, when I struggle with that, I did this. So you should just do that. And you're like, yeah. uh, did you listen to me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Did yeah. you actually listen to me? So that's what it feels like when you inject a customer success story too early on. But if you make somebody feel seen, heard and understood, they're going to be way more open to that story. And the beauty is, if that story has a main character who's relatable to the prospect, they will hopefully see themselves in the pains, the desires, and the transformation of that human being. And ultimately, they start rehearsing what it could look like to have you become their Yoda, yeah. right? their mm -hmm. guide, which is the goal. Yeah. And it and it's interesting there what you were just saying about the, the you know, seen, heard, and understood. Uh, I was talking to somebody else recently who did uh, – who was doing an engagement at a, at a very large company and they went through this engagement. And at the end he was getting feedback and these people were saying like, uh, or he was saying, you know, what did you get out of it? And they said, well, I, I, you know, I really felt seen and heard and understood maybe not exactly those words. Yeah. And his takeaway was, wow, that means most of the time you don't feel seen, heard and understood. Um, because that's, that's almost like baseline, isn't it? I mean, you'd expect that. But that's a big issue for people. So to your point, if you're not asking good questions and then actively listening and really making the person feel that you're interested in them, that you see them, that you hear them, you're asking qualifying or follow up questions to validate what they're saying. So now they feel like, OK, you're you're there to understand me. Now, a lot of those um, a, a lot of the armor will fall away. And they'll be receptive then to the story and probably even engage in it themselves, like interact during the story. Totally. And I really feel that the unscalable is the new scalable. And I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. This morning, I re received a, uh, a pitch in my DMs on LinkedIn. And this person had actually taken the time to do some research on my about section and pick a part right. of my story and mention it. Now, I kind of got this crazy feeling where I was like, oh, this feels incredible. This feels good. Like the, somebody mm -hmm. actually paid attention and it feels incredible. And that feeling you can't really replicate because I think everybody's so obsessed with scale right now. Mm -hmm. And they're so obsessed in uh, into, well, I suppose they're so obsessed with what it means for them, their promotion, their quota, their commission. They, for, they forget the term with them. Right. Yep. What's in it for me, as Zig Ziglar said, right? What's in it for me? And that's what your prospects are thinking, right? What's in it for me? How can you help me? How can you help me solve my problem? And when you really take the time to personalize even an outreach or really yep. make somebody feel seen through picking up something, picking up on something during a conversation and relaying it back to them in their own language, it, it feels incredible. It really takes the relationship to that next level versus a stand-up product pitch which shoves features down your throat it doesn't work it yeah doesn't work. yeah yeah no and exactly and the other thing too is if you if you're prospecting and you see somebody like has posted something on linkedin um i always know it's like if somebody says oh great post i immediately know you didn't read it because if you read it, you would have had something to say about it. So to be honest, it's almost insulting to post that. It's better if you say, oh, it's a great post. And by the way, uh, that was an interesting point you made there about this and, and add to it. Uh, and again, it's the same thing that you're talking about when you're having communications. It's like people's antennas are kind of up now in a way that they may not have been before. Um, but their their antennas are up for people who are who are not being genuine and not being authentic or you know trying trying to pull a fast one on you. I just think we're we're so much more attuned to that now. Yeah, hundred percent. I think you know when you take a look at your LinkedIn example, it's funny because <laughs> you know if somebody says, "Hey, John, great post, cool photo," you're like, mm, yeah. 
But if yeah. somebody, as you said, takes the time to read it and comment on something specific, I can almost guarantee that the story you now have of that person up here is mm -hmm. way more impactful and powerful. Their credibility stock has increased and also their positioning in your mind is increased. So I think a lot of the time we think about storytelling as, okay, I'm going to share this story inside of this moment in the mm -hmm. discovery call, but hold on. The way you interacted with them, the way that you showed up eight minutes for the lead, late for the meeting without apologizing, the mm -hmm. way you didn't say, you said you were going to follow up with them, but you didn't. That, that's all sharing a story about you. So you've got to be really congruent with what you say you are. And I think now more than ever, it's actually quite easy to, to spot. But once again, we're all human beings and we make mistakes. But now more than ever, I think it's easy to spot. People are craving intimacy and transparency. Yeah, no, no, 100%, 100%. Listen, this has been fantastic, Ravi. All of Ravi's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Ravi, tell your story and um, what you do. Yeah, man. Well, listen, I didn't get my start as a storyteller and public speaker when I popped out my mum's womb. That's definitely not how it began, you know. It all started for me when my mum literally shoved me into the same dance school as my little sister when I was eight <laughs> years old. I remember, John, I was so mad because I was the only dude in my entire school <laughs> in dance and I was scared that this was going to get out and it did, <laughs> but that's another story. But deep down, I was like, whoa, this is so cool. This is like incredible. I fell in love with the stage, but eventually my mum let me quit and I stumbled into theatre as a teen. And then growing up, everybody was always saying, hey, Rav, uh, are you going to take this whole speaking, presenting or acting thing seriously? Because we think you're pretty good at it. And I was like, no, I want to make money. <laughs> like I'd watched the movie <laughs> Wall Street so many uh -huh. times. I was like, yeah, I want to be like Gordon Gecko." So <laughs> I wanted to work in the world of corporate sales and I wanted to do it on the trading floor. So that's what I did. I finished up business school. And I ended up on the trading floor at Citibank where I began my career in corporate sales as a sales trader. And I remember on paper, it was everything I'd always wanted. But deep down, I felt this misalignment. And I felt like, right. man, I'm meant for something different, but I just don't know what that is. So in August 2016, I said, you know what? I'm going to go try a host of different things. So I started leading sales teams in early stage startups, started dabbling in the world of coaching, consulting. I did a few TV and radio appearances. And over time, I realized these three things, John. I was like, number one, why do salespeople feel like it's illegal to showcase their true personality in a presentation? <laughs> it's like, you can't be yourself. You have to put on this pitch voice, right? Yeah, yeah. And number two is, why is there little to no storytelling? And number three, why is there so much feature dumping and mm. accolade flexing that goes on in presentations? And I realized there's a big problem to be solved there, which has led me to the exact mission that I'm on now, which is really helping B2B SaaS and B2B sales teams ditch feature setting and sell more through storytelling. Yeah, and then that's a noble mission because let's face it, we've all been on the receiving end of the opposite. So, <laughs> yeah, I hope yeah. you could. I hope you can help lots of people. As I said, all Ravi's information will be below this video. Um, but listen, thanks again. Fascinating and some great takeaways uh, for the audience. Thank you all for watching, listening, and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.